Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today we are going to learn about equations in y equals mx form, otherwise known as direct variation. We're going to use direct variation to solve problems. Now, in our real world link here, the amount of money David can raise for the Wish Upon a Rainbow Bikeathon is shown in the table, where our biking time is on the left and the money raised is on the right. Now, recall that when the ratio of two variable quantities is constant, a proportional relationship exists. This relationship is called a direct variation. The constant ratio is called the constant of variation, or constant of proportionality. Now, complete the steps below to derive the equation for a direct variation. Now, our slope formula that we have been practicing is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals m. Now, in this graph, we have a point here at our origin, 0, 0, and then a random point, x, y. They substituted in, making x1, y1 the 0, 0, and the x2, y2 the x, y. So our y2 was y, our minus 0, and then x minus 0, which just simplifies to y over x. Now if we want to solve for y, all we need to do is actually multiply by that x on both sides so that the x's cancel out on the left side and you're left with y equals mx. It says use the table to find the rate of change. Then write an equation in y equals mx form to represent the situation. Well, from 20 to 40 we're increasing by 20. From 2 to 4 we're increasing by 2. So our change is 20 over 2, which is actually $10 per hour. Now, our rate of change is going to go in for m. So y equals 10x. That 10 goes in for our m here. Now, what is direct variation? It is a linear relationship when the ratio of y to x is a constant m. We say y varies directly with x. Symbols we're going to use are m equals y over x or y equals mx, where m is the constant of variation and m is not equal to zero. We're not going to have zero. An example, y equals 3x, and you can see that on the graph. Now the slope of this is the m. That is our rate of change. That is our slope. Since 0, 0 is one solution of y equals mx, the graph of a direct variation always, always, always passes through the origin here. So let's look at our first example. Two minutes after a skydiver opens his parachute, he has descended 1,900 feet. After five minutes, he descended 4,750 feet. If the distance varies directly with the time, at what rate is the skydiver descending? Well, we can solve this by looking at our feet over our time. Well, if we look at the first one, we have 2 minutes and 1,900 feet. So this can be 1,900 feet over 2 minutes. But, a word of caution here, this is descended. So we need to go negative because he's falling. Now if we simplify this by dividing by 2 on top and bottom, we would get negative 950 feet per 1 minute. Since again, we divided by 2 on top and bottom here to get us the negative 950 feet per minute. Now it's always good to make sure that these are constant. It, it, it says they are, but if we check this by going negative 4,750 feet over the 5 minutes, 
And in this case, we can divide by 5 on top and bottom. When you take negative 4,750 divided by 5, you once again get negative 950 feet per minute. So our answer, what is the rate the skydiver is descending? Negative 950 feet per minute. That's a quick fall. A grocery store sells six oranges for two dollars. Assume that the cost of the oranges varies directly with the number of oranges. This situation can be represented by the equation y equals one-third x. Graph it and figure out the cost per orange. Well, we can assume that we're going to start at zero, zero. Makes sense, zero oranges, zero dollars. Now on the bottom here, this is going to be our number of oranges. And going up, this is going to represent our cost. Now, let's look at our y equals one-third x. Remember that this change can be represented as rise over run. So we're actually going to go up one and over three for each point. So again, we can go up one unit, that is, and over three, which puts us right here. We can go from there up one unit, which is a dollar, and over three oranges to the six. And again, up one unit, run three. And we'll stop there since we'll fall off the graph if we don't. And we can draw in our graph just like that. Now what is the cost per orange? Well, two ways to go about that. We could look at our graph at one orange and go, well, what is the cost right there? Well, it's under 50 cents, so we can kind of estimate 30, 40 cents or so. Or we can look at it and go, well, one third, well, one third as a decimal is about 0.33. So it cost about 33 cents per orange. Another way of doing that, the $2 divided by six oranges, how much does one orange cost? Well, divide by six on top and bottom, and two divided by six is just one more way to get 0 0.33. So a lot of different ways to get your 33 cents per orange. When we want to compare direct variations, we can use tables, graphs, words, or equations to represent and compare proportional relationships. We can see our table, where with our x is going up, our y is going up. We can see our graph. We can have an equation. We can have words. And when the x value changes by an amount a, the y value will have to change by the corresponding amount m times a. Let's see how this looks. Damon's earnings for four weeks from a part-time job are shown in the table. Assume that his earnings vary directly with the number of hours work. We have time worked across the top. We have total pay underneath that. He can take a job that will pay him $7.35 per hour worked. What job has the better pay? And explain. Well, let's look at his time worked per hour here. We have $112.50 for 15 hours. Well, how much does he make in one hour? Well, divide by that 15 on top and bottom, and that equals 7.5 or $7.50 an hour. And that would be true if you did 90 over 12, 
would be 750 per hour. The twenty, uh, the hundred and sixty-five dollars for twenty-two would get you to nine dollars or seven dollars and fifty cents an hour, and the sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents divided by nine hours would also get you seven dollars and fifty cents per hour. So, what's the better job with a better pay at least? Well, the answer to this one is his current job. And when we go to explain this, we could say the unit rate. of his current job is seven dollars and fifty cents. Clean that dollar sign up there real quick here. Which is greater than seven dollars and thirty-five cents per hour. So we can look at unit rates to help us solve these problems. Now, a charter bus travels 210 miles in three and a half hours. Assume the distance traveled is directly proportional to the time traveled. Write and solve a direct variation equation to find out how far the bus will travel in six hours. What we're going to do here is to start with our y equals mx equation. Now, we're going to set our y equal to 210 and our x equal to, I'm going to use the decimal form, 3.5 hours. Now, first substitute this in. So we have 210 equals m times 3.5. We want to solve. We want to solve for m here. So divide by 3.5 on both sides. And 210 divided by 3.5 is 60. So 60 equals m. Now once I have this information, I can make a new y equals mx equation, but now I know m. I know that y equals 60x. So y here was our miles, x was our time, and we're now given six hours. We're given our time, and we're looking for our miles. So we can substitute in. We can say y is going to equal 60 times 6. And 60 times 6 is 360 miles. So what did we actually do here? We took the first part of the information, the 210 miles in three and a half hours. We set these as variables, y being the distance, x being the time, we substituted it into our y equals mx, and we solved for m. What this m is, is basically 60 miles per hour. That is our rate of change. So our equation is y equals 60x. That is the equation, saying our distance, y, is going to equal 60 miles an hour times our amount of time x. Now once we have this equation, we can put anything in that we want for x, such as 6 hours. Take our 6 hours times the 60 to get our distance of 360 miles. Let's look at another one that's very similar to this. A monarch butterfly can fly 93 miles in 15 hours. Assume the distance traveled is directly proportional to the time traveled. Write and solve a direct variation equation to find out how far the monarch butterfly will travel in 24 hours. So again, the first step we are going to say is y equals mx. We're going to start with that on every one of these types of problems, y equals mx. Now we have 93 miles, and we have 15 hours. Now another little fact 
is distance equals rate times time. So most of the time in our distance and time problems, our distance is going to be the y. Our rate will be the m. And the time will be our x. And so when we go to look to set up these variables, our distance is going to be our y. And our time is going to be our x. And so when I go to make this substitution into y equals mx, I'm going to say 93 for y equals m, that's what I'm looking for, times 15. Now, simplify this by dividing by 15 on both sides, and 93 divided by 15 is 6.2. So 6.2 equals m. In other words, the butterfly is traveling at 6.2 miles per hour. Now, once this is done, I can set up an equation using that y equals mx. y equals 6.2x. Now, once I have this equation, I could solve for the time, I could solve for the distance using that rate of change, using that uh, direct variation of 6.2. So, if y equals 6.2x, and my x is going to be my time here, 24 hours, y is going to equal 6.2 times 24, and 6.2 times 24 is 148 and 8 tenths miles. So once again, if we recap, we're going to take this first fact in these problems, 93 miles and 15 hours. Now, we're saying those are proportional to each other. So we can use our y equals mx or d equals rt. They're both the same here. Set our distance equal to y, our time equal to x, and substitute those into the y equals mx solve for m. And that allows us to set up a new equation. This new equation can allow us to do a lot of things. We can solve for time, we can solve for distance. In this question, in the second half, we're given 24 hours. So we can substitute in 24 hours 4x, multiply it by that rate of 6.2, and get our final answer of 148 and 8 tenths miles. Good luck.